Okay, my name is Frederick Nilsson. I'm a professor in packaging logistics here at the Department of Design Science. And I will in this um, video, this presentation, focus on sustainable supply chains uh, by introducing what is supply chains, how do they affect our economy, our, 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 our global, um, the global uh, world as such, and how is the sustainable development related to it? How, what is a sustainable supply chain and what are the main challenges in uh, making supply chains sustainable? Um, starting uh, uh, with, with a picture of the market, the market of today. Um, we are, have seen and are seeing great market changes like increased customer consumer demands, uh, about competition, uh, increased competition, and about globalization. Uh, today is not an issue of, of international trade for most companies. That is, that is what we are doing. And we are global organizations. Most of the time we are involved in, in one way or another, either supplying to them or being one of the, one, uh, the big big uh, players. Um, in order to handle these market changes we are developing a number of strategies. Uh, customization, um, developing products that feels that they are for just me uh, and making that go. Focusing on core competences, uh, we are a company just focusing on this part of a package or this part of a, a car or something like that and then we together in what I will discuss as supply chains, work together and we outsource everything that is not our focus. And we have seen a, the, the, the trend in outsourcing coming from, from, from China uh, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, outsourcing uh, manufacturing for example, and now we're seeing that to, to, to South America or to, to uh, Africa. Uh, supply chain management has been a growing uh, concept and the, the, the concept of supply chains um, that we, if we have many companies focusing on their core competences, they have to work together and supplying the market, the consumer, uh, the customers in the end, we have to put together these. So they're making one small part each and together they are de uh, delivering that car or that specific food product that we want. And other, uh, other concepts as resilience and so on is also coming, how, how we can handle this. Uh, we have also improved technologies, uh, our information data systems, the whole digitalization process going on. Uh, it changes the way how, how fast we can uh, transform things. Uh, if we have the, the additive manufacturing and 3D printing and all of that can also change how we even uh, produce things and distribute things and so on. Uh, and I mentioned also here intelligent packaging as being one of those, those things that transform on this. Uh, to give you the, the uh, uh, short version of what is a supply chain, a uh, definition uh, focuses on the integration of key business processes from end users to original suppliers that provides products, services and information that add value for the customer and other stakeholders. So it involves businesses, uh, companies working together and how their processes are interlinked or they, how, they, how they are integrated to each other. Um, they, they focus on product service and all the information as well as financial flows in this case. Uh, and the focus is of course in this de definition to add value to the customer. And the customer could be the next part in this, this chain or the end customer in terms of consumer in this case. Um, another definition uh, focusing on the purpose uh, that supply chains are for the purpose of improving the long-term performance of the invid individual companies and the supply chain as a whole. So we have a, a, um, uh, two levels here focusing on, on the individual company is performing better if it's working together with others. And in this working together with others, then we are forming the supply chains. Um, a normal supply chain then, um, starting with the, the end consumer in that they are the one demanding something, um, is then set up of a number of steps. 
the consumer perhaps buys the product, take a food product, milk in, in, in a store, retail store, that in turn is ordering from a distribution center or a wholesaler, that in turn is getting their products from a, a um, uh, producer that in the further upstream the supply chain have, have um, uh, suppliers that, uh, that, that uh, farmers for example that are having cows and so on. So, so a, a simple illustration of a supply chain is like for one step in, in the chain there is a uh, farmer or a, a raw material producer, uh, there is a producer taken into a commercial product that is then distributed to a wholesaler that then distributes out to retailers in different ways. And the same comes for cars, cell phones, whatever type of price that, that, that we can see the sim similar structures. However, this is, uh, while this is the most common way to illustrate the supply chain, and for most of us here to find it a, a, a simple, there are some problems uh, with this. Um, a lot of companies, and this is, this is taken from some of that research, um, are thinking in these terms that we have these steps and the supply chain is really a chain. With, with we can see the links together, how, how it's formed. Um, and a, a quotation here is f f saying that, that from, from a, in this case, a car manufacturing company, saying that a few years ago our engineers mapped the supply chain of a small assembly by tracing it all the way back to the mine, in this case, as, 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 as experts. Um, they did this exercise and demonstrated the benefits of supply chain management. Uh, and we set out to manage the supply chain as a system. So they mapped it out, they got this nice map as I showed the, the earlier picture, they knew which the actors was. However, yeah, this is a simple illustration of a supply chain. Um, to, to, to continue the, the quotation here, that frankly, we have not been able to do it, i.e. to manage the supply chain in, uh, in that simple way as they, they fought for mapping it. The problem was, as soon as we came up with a strategy for managing the chain, the chain changes on us. We got new suppliers and new relationship configurations. It took a lot of effort to map one supply chain and we could not possibly map it every time something changed. So the reality in supply chains or in inter, uh, the inter-organizational work between companies is that they, it changes. And that is the real strength of, of supply chains, but it's also the, the, the weakness in terms of that it changes all the time. So if we try to improve something in, in next year, we are not working with that supplier or that customer. So those improvements, where do they go and so on. Um, and, and, and it's while there are very simplistic views in most of the, I would say, romantic theories of supply chains, um, you see here in this, this uh, re what some of the reasons why it changes often and why they couldn't manage this as a more simple uh, system is we are not talking about chains, really. It's a network of companies. Companies that are, are bought by each other, are sold by each other, they are new starters, uh, venture, uh, venture companies and so on. So it's networks we are talking about, really. Um, not based on supply. Uh, the early versions of the supply chain management is that you're supplying someone that's supplying someone and so on, and not really focusing on the demand. What, what is the demand we, we need here? And demand changes, we know that quite much. Um, there's no static picture of a supply chain or of an organization, it's dynamic. It's not simple, it's complex, uh, if we take that. We can't make it averageable in that sense. Uh, it's highly diverse in competences and how these dynamically change over time. So the approaches and methods we are doing handling this, even if it was only from a business perspective, is challenging. And if we're then adding sustainable development to this, uh, we might even have greater complexity to handle, which is one of some of the challenges I will get back to. Uh, despite all this and the knowledge we have about it, it's still like most companies and when they're working in supply chains still work on trying to control things. They want 
they invest a lot of time, resources and efforts in control and prediction and in, in how to reduce all this complexity to make it simple for each other. Uh, and, and somewhere they want to reduce uncertainty in every term. Uh, and that is quite simple by framing it differently. Uh, you can at least believe that it's controllable, but in reality it's not. So I'm more in this picture showing that a, a more realistic view, still very simplified, uh, of, of a supply chain is a complex network of m very many, I would say, uh, c consumers uh, that and a lot of retailers or, or people selling them. We have a whole e-commerce thing now uh, upcoming. Uh, there are a lot of producers, there are a lot of suppliers of different things and again the demand changes in all of these, these, these chains. So it's much more complex than that. Um, and that is the reality we have to, 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 to think about. So what, 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 what is then a true model, if we say, uh, frame it like that, of a supply chain? Yeah, the simple view as, 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 as we started with is that it's a number of business processes that are aligned to each other and that could be organizations representing these. Another view is it is the network of companies, corporate identities working together. Uh, and they have their core competence and so on. But if we look at it strictly empirical, a supply chain is a number of people. They are employed by different of these, uh, employed by other peoples representing different organizations but are working together and they use a lot of artifacts in terms of, of uh, transport items, uh, trucks, uh, so on, machinery and so on, to produce things that they are interconnected. Depending on the, 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 the abstraction we, we make here or the, the reality uh, we want to configure, how we deal with sustainable development is, is uh, definitely uh, will impact uh, the results coming from it also. Sustainable supply chain management um, is a growing area and there are some of the semical papers from 2008 by Carton Rogers that are the first major uh, research um, uh, papers discussing it. And it, here you can see their, their definition as the strategic, transparent integration and achievement of an organizational social, environmental and economic goals. Those are the three pillars of sustainable development. Um, they are in a systematic coordination of key inter-organizational business processes. I, that is supply chain, how you systematically integrate business processes. And for improving the long-term economic performance of the individual company and its supply chains. So the, the, the economic performance is still in sustainable supply chains, the focus in, in that. But it's one of the most widely uh, definitions. Um, to present some of the challenges in working with sustainable uh, development in supply chains, when you come to inter-organizational organizations, I have, have some examples here from, from uh, for example, food, food industry and food supply chains. And, and reason uh, addressing them is also there is a lot of, I say, misconceptions of what is what is uh, bad in, in or good for sustainable development when it comes to food, for example. And one is food miles, uh, that was a, a discussed for a number of years ago, about how much we transport things, and that should have a great impact on, on, on uh, our impact for, for, for food products, for example. In this, this uh, illustration here, this is a uh, study in the US, um, uh, and, and where they look at how much a family uh, consume or, or, or impact the climate in terms of uh, carbon dioxide equivalents per year and it's 1.8.1 uh, 1 tons as their estimation how they have figured this out. Um, and he has a comparison here that driving a, 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 a car uh, that has about a liter per, per, per uh, uh, 10 kilometers um, is around 4.4 ton CO2 per, per, per year for comparison. Looking at the, the, uh, the whole supply chain of this, and where is this 8.1 ton uh, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, pr um, uh, where do, do, does it up come? Um, in, in food miles, the delivery part of it, 
it's 4% of the total impact of this. So, so it's like 0.4 ton of this 8.1, that is about food miles. So 4% of the whole. If we take all the all freight uh, that is for every part to the machinery, for, for water, for cleaning things and all, all, all that that is uh, included, we uh, get to 11% of, of the whole, whole uh, part of it. While food production is 83% of it, so the, 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 the food part of it. And in this case, there have been transportation as pack and packaging has been the major, I would say, bad guys when it comes to, to, to uh, environmental impact and so on. And again, uh, looking at these figures and similar figures that are produced, saying that, okay, if, if we lose the products, then that's the problem. So by improving packaging, for example, so I've raised here, we can save more of those 83% that really impact something. So if you evaluate the waste in a supply chain, uh, the, the most to think about when it comes to most of our produced items is, is the product itself. So if we, if we have uh, transported very much or we have, have a packaging solution uh, that can protect it better, so we don't have to throw away good products, that is more beneficial in the supply chain that f than, for example, minimizing packaging for packing safe or other parts of it like transportation. Very easy to, to, to forget. Other challenges uh, in, in this is also where does things happen? And there are few examples uh, that empirically really have, have, have uh, measured how much waste in food supply chains, for example, that is uh, in the supply chain or for that matter by the consumers. There are a few, and one is, is in Brazil, where they see that there is a, a great deal of, of losses of, uh, of uh, vegetable and fruit in the supply chain. Uh, while uh, not that much as uh, with the consumers. And, and right now, when it comes to research, we don't know that in most contexts. So today we talk very much about that the waste in for food, for example, in, in, in Sweden, is by the consumers and not that much in, in the supply chains. Uh, while I think differently. I think it's much more, and we're looking into that. Um, Again, uh, just take a city here uh, and working with these figures when it comes to fruit and vegetables in this example. Uh, a city of Lund, 100,000 citizens for example, that is 20 ton of de losses per day that is produced when it comes to how much, how much uh, food they do. And if we could improve, for example, the protection when it comes to packing, or we have like for grapes, uh, tomatoes and so on, avocados and so on, it's not that I would say, well developed today, uh, we could impact it quite much by reducing it by almost a ton per day or something like that in, in uh, unnecessary losses. To, to widen this a little bit more and uh, looking at the whole uh, sustainable development, uh, not only the environmental and economic part of it, there are also, also challenges that are raised in, in, in the setup of supply chains that if we if we have uh, um, um, uh, farmers, in this example, as you see here, uh, in the South Africa, selling or producing, in this case, uh, grapes, table grapes, uh, that are then transported, or in first case, transported within South Africa to, 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 to uh, exporters, then imported to Europe, and then distributed in Europe in several steps uh, uh, until it reaches uh, the retail stores and us as consumers. Um, there are challenges when it comes to social sustainability in this, that, that the farmers, for most of the farmers in South Africa, they don't get paid until we have bought the product in the, the retail chain. And they can't impact anything that happens in the chain, so if, if there's a huge loss of, of grapes because of bad handling in the whole supply chain, they are the one having to pay for it, because they don't get any uh, payment for that. That is some uh, losses. So how contracts and setups in supply chains are, are being made have a huge effect on this. And in the far end, when we buy those products as consumers, we have an impact on this. So a lot of things to think about. So summarizing uh, this and where we are, 
um, the levels of sustainability in supply chain, as this picture is showing, that there is quite much in, in, uh, in, in supply chain, for most supply chains, there is legal compliance. They're waiting to a new law or a new, new, new um, uh, requirement from uh, governments, and then they comply. It becomes a reactive way of minimizing costs and working in that sense. The next level is uh, risk minimization. And here it's more of those scandals we have seen in supply chains, where, where uh, if it's in food or if it's in other uh, areas, medicine and so on, that, that it's been tampered with or uh, changed from, from uh, one type of meat to another, or whatever it could be, um, that they are thinking about how can we minimize those risks and quite often uh, handle with, I would say, uh, risk minimization in terms of uh, increase the, the, the um, uh, avoiding bad will and, and they handle it in that way. Where we are hoping in this area to see is more structured improvements that we really work across the borders, not only having better contracts with our suppliers, but also working really on changing things and not only demanding them to do something but helping each other in doing this uh, so we maximize goodwill and these we are csr um, uh, csr questions become something of not only we are doing it when we have time left to do it in companies but we are integrated in our to our business and then we can work more on proactive value and in the far end working on sustainable development where we have like a life cycle perspective on products, not only changing supplier because that supplier didn't supply in that way we want, but really working together on this thing. I want to finalize um, this with, with some of the, the propositions we have found in uh, or made from our research looking at what are the challenges, how can we work with, with, with uh, sustainable supply chains and what are those. Uh, and we'll present uh, these five areas um, that we have identified in our research as challenges with some research propositions that for you uh, to, to discuss, to think about and, and uh, come up to, to, to perhaps solutions uh, and work further on. The identified cost, uh, uh, challenge we have found are cost, it's about the complexity, about how to operationalize um, this, it's about mindset and cultural changes and that is only not only in, 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 in uh, nationwide it's uh, cultural in companies or, or research groups or, or um, uh, consumers uh, and uncertainties and I will present these and a, a proposition uh, that could be uh, as I said an input to for a discussion and one of the I would say the most uh, discussed uh, challenge in literature when it comes to this is cost. Um, it's raised that it will be costly uh, to do this and the most uh, the major reason why companies are not doing more in this area is that it costs too much and they can't really financially uh, pay, have a payback time that is short enough for them to, 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 to do this. And this I see, I can also um, verify uh, from uh, own, uh, own discussions with setting up new research projects that have a three year perspective. The companies I'm working with right now, um, they're saying, okay, uh, we want payback in uh, half a year or something. And, and, and then we minimize the questions to be, in the end, not that interesting as they could be if we had a three to five year perspective, for example. And they're driven by this. So, this proposition, as you can, can read here, folks very much of, of, of we, we have to see these, these costs in a different view. We have to include them and not only see the, I would say, financial cost, uh, the other costs that are, we have not quantified so good that have to be taken into consideration. The second challenge that we, we, we found in, in the research is that of complexity. Um, there are, as showed from the earlier pictures, there is a huge complexity in the way networks are set up or how you work together 
uh, in this. It's a number of decision makers, it's a number of stakeholders, not only the companies, but also legislation or government in one country and in another country, and then we have uh, global uh, authorities and so on to consider. So, so there are a lot of aspects, and then all these demand changes that could, could, can sh uh, come quite, quite quickly uh, causes a complexity. And, and as this uh, proposition, uh, research proposition focus on is that, that uh, for it be to become a reality, we have to not only reduce or try to reduce this complexity, but instead comprehend it uh, and explore it as such. Uh, and, and use it to develop these solutions. Um, the third um, found sustainability challenge is that of opera operationalization, a difficult word to say. Um, that is, we can easy, and companies can do that also, see that the, the, the Brundtland Commission from 87 or the other things being raised in this, these large meetings uh, they can buy in quite easily. But making it into something that is for their specific business process or for their, their employees to really act upon, that is a huge challenge. How to interpret what is sustainable development for us and what is it, how can we um, work on it, is one. And then the inertia in either being that you can't interpret it in a good way, or in which it takes too much efforts to change something. It would cost too much and we might get bankrupt while we're doing this. Um, so how to, to interpret it and transform it and then the inertia that we have to handle are two central aspects of the operationalization of sustainable development that has to be uh, considered. The fourth challenge is that of mindset and cultural changes that we have found. Um, and that is, that is uh, the mindset, uh, the culture of a company, the culture of a nation, how, how that is affecting how we, how we really do things. Uh, is it a, a, a real problem with, with, with uh, uh, carbon emissions, for example? Uh, depending on the mindset of the organization, it will be prioritized more or less. Uh, how, how can this be used in a better way? How can it be used as a, crit a critical, creative, incorporative way of looking at sustainability? Uh, not only saying this one way or another. So changing the mindset and the culture. We have seen that if, if top management is not involved in a sustainable initiative for a company, it won't happen. Uh, then there, there will be people in the companies very, very interested, but it won't happen. And the other way around, we have also seen that even if there is a commitment, if, if, if it's not transferred into and changes how people interact and discuss things, i.e. changing the culture, it won't happen other, otherwise, while it's still manifested. So this is another, uh, the fourth proposition. The final one is about uncertainty. Uh, being a, a huge challenge uh, due to the, and quite correlated to the complexity. And what is raised in most of the research is that of governmentals, uh, regulations, and how that will affect supply chains. Um, the focus on uh, electrical vehicles, for example, will that be supported in the future? So we focus on that. Or biofuel, uh, is that the future? So we can focus on those. Or a type of material not to use or to use in products, um, or how we work together. That is central. And this uncertainty can be accepted to some degree, but it's also a great excuse for not doing things. We are waiting, and ev if everyone is waiting, nothing will happen. Uh, and that's why, the, of course, it's important with these international agreements that at least they set an agenda to, 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 to break down into governments and then they can uh, be, be better on this. But again, working with global supply chains, working internationally, this is a, a, a uh, great challenge uh, also because uncertainty uh, is created this. So social programs, policy measures, and so on, 
uh, needs to be established together in, in this sense, and it can't only be that we are waiting for each other. Okay, this was a, a um, quick introduction to supply chains, uh, to supply chain management, to, to sustainability and the, 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 the challenge we, we see for May in making supply chains sustainable. Thank you. <laughs>